Good evening, everybody. Did you enjoy yourself? Um, I had an amazing day, um, very inspiring with all my fellow speakers, so I hope you had as well. I'm here to talk about sustainable creativity. And people who are gurus in this area tell you that you can learn creativity. If you put, you know, effort, um, if you learn the skill, if you really study and practice it over and over again, you can learn creativity. Anybody can learn creativity. I must add that one of the ingredients that you do need in order to be creative is have passion. And being a half Italian, half Spanish, Argentinian, I kind of know a bit about the topic. So what I hope I can do today, I like to either um, inspire you or incredibly depress you. So hopefully I'll do the first one. Um, I set up a business in 2002 um, with a sustainability communication consultancy, which I sold in 2008 to an advertising agency. And I stepped down as a CEO about 2010, early 2010. And in between starting the business and selling the business, it was the best and the worst years of my life. So beginning of the 2008, a lot of my friends congratulate me and said, oh, well done, you know, you sold your business, it's incredible. But what is still puzzling to me, how success felt a lot like failure. And yes, <laughs> you heard failure. So although a company has recognized the economical value of my business, which was absolutely incredible, I felt like I was empty. I didn't have a purpose. So when I stepped out of a CEO role, I didn't know what to do with my life. I was wondering, would I ever be able to love and to feel as much passion to my next business as I had for my last? I didn't know. It was a bit like falling in love, you know, you kind of go out with a guy and, you know, date and you think this is it and then you break up and then, <sighs> would I ever feel this way? Well, you can, but time is an incredible healer. So I took a holiday, new experience, by the way, it's amazing what a holiday can do to you. And um, I made the purpose to really, really, really start practicing creativity. I didn't know where to start. So I had all these questions and I kind of was seeking the answer, what I'm going to do next? And I was like, okay, right. Uh, was very disciplined, searching the internet, read the newspaper, talk to people. Took me nowhere. So I started reframing the questions. And every time I reframed the question, I had a different answer. Every time I had a different answer, I was like, whoa. This is a bit out of my comfort zone. I'm not feeling comfortable with this. But then I did it again and again and again and again. And every time I get out of my comfort zone, I was feeling a lot more confident. That's that is the process of creativity. You kind of like do it all the time and you reframe questions and you do it over and over again. And at some point, it becomes very clear. There it is, just in front of you. You'll know a bit more about what I will do in September, but for now, leave it like that. So, um, for me, it was like, okay, how can I transmit this to you? How can I actually help you to understand what creativity is all about? It lies within you. It's a fire. Everybody has it. Everybody can unleash it and is ready to do it. It's about connecting the dots in a different way. It's about, um, I'm sorry about the cliche, but thinking outside the box, being disruptive. If you want something badly enough, you can get it. It's about how would you deconstruct a situation or a product or a service and, uh, and find a way to put it together in a slightly different way, adding value, creating a new thing, something that other people might also want and enjoy. Um, you've got to try to uh, kind of break every convention, uh, think about things that you normally don't think, go and talk to people that you will normally not do. So the best advice I had is this friend of mine said, if you really want to discover what you're really good at, you need to talk to the people that don't like you to really appreciate what you perhaps could do with yourself. And I was like, great, that's a great piece of advice. So what did it take me is uh, I was in a place in which I was ready. I was ready to start again. It's like I was ready to, you know, six o'clock in the morning, go for a run, go back to work, rock on. Um, but the creative process of starting a business is incredibly exciting. Uh, you can't wait to get up in the morning, Monday morning. It is officially my favorite day, and I'm not a freak. 
Um, but then you become a manager, um, and then you start having less and less time to do what entrepreneurs do best, which is to create. So you have to be very honest about what you're good at, whether you're good as managing or whether you're an entrepreneur. I must be very good at being creative because I'm a terrible manager. So, um, yeah, next business, I will stick to what I'm really good at. And there's examples that there's a very successful um, entrepreneurs who actually have not run their own businesses. For example, James Dyson, he sticks to what he's brilliant at, which is inventing, and have a team of people which actually run their business. So, what can I leave you with? How creativity is fueled and what else can you do? Well, I've learned a lot in the last 10 years about, you know, failing and passion and start it again. And I was not comfortable in the beginning with, with that feeling because I thought I was alone, on my own. Nobody would ever understand. Nobody ever felt this way. I was just wrong. Um, when I talk to more and more entrepreneurs, what I was suffering is something very common, that people that start businesses or are performers, etc., actually suffer from. Um, and the people that you might be surprised, people that are, are incredibly successful, um, has gone through the process of learning through failure to be able to achieve greater success. Did you know that Van Gogh um, sold one uh, painting in his lifetime and to a friend? I didn't. Um, and Michael Jordan never actually made it to his basketball team. And Disney got fired from a newspaper because he wasn't creative enough. And Edison actually uh, tried to create the light bulb about a thousand times, failing a thousand times before he saw the light. Not a pun intended. Fred Astaire, which is probably one of my favorite performers, basically when he went to audition to MGM Studios, the casting director wrote, a bit bold, can't sing, um, not great actor, and can dance a little. He kept that note, and that was keep him driving him to be who he was. Um, and you think, what makes you get up in the morning after failing or after feeling rejected to do it all over again? Passion, conviction. That fire inside you that really you believe that you can do it, that you can convince people that you have something strong enough that the world will want, that you can really truly make a difference. Whether it is a new book, whether it is a piece of music, whether it is a new business, whether it's a new product, whatever that might be, if you believe in it, you can do it. So I'd like to start right here, right now with you guys. Are you guys ready? So think about what would you like to change? What your dreams are? What you might want? Now, I want you to think, step by step, how would you get it? How would you achieve it? How do you get there? Now, do you feel passionate about it? Does your heart just keep a bit? That is your starting point. That's what passion is all about. That's what creativity is all about. Now you just need to just do it. So. What I'd like you to leave you with is, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter that it's not right the first time, or the second time, or the time after that, or even the time after that. As long as you learn all the way through the experience and the journey, um, and as long as you take life as an experiment, a really, really like a kitchen, like really experimenting and taking something out of that, failure can teach you more sometimes than success. So, game on. Be creative. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.